is separated into three regions. Okay, so from here to here, this is the cerebrum. The cerebrum. This structure here is the cerebellum. The cerebellum means little brain. And here we have the brain stem. The brain stem. <clears throat> the cerebrum is separated into the right and left hemisphere. Now remember that um, it would be the right side of the animal or right side of the patient, not your right side. Okay, so this would be the right hemisphere of the brain and this would be the left hemisphere of the brain. The right hemisphere really specializes in creativity, art, music, um, nonlinear thinking, okay? And your mathematical, verbal side, your more logical thinking is predominant in the left hemisphere of the brain. Now, the left and right hemispheres of the brain are separated by a deep groove, okay? So this deep groove here, a deep groove, we call that a fissure. Okay, that's just the um, general terminology that we use for a deep groove. Just like if you were to, um, if there was a earthquake and the road were to split, making a deep groove, they would call that a fissure as well. Okay, so this is a fissure and the name of this fissure is the great longitudinal fissure. So the great longitudinal fissure separates the right hemisphere from the left hemisphere. Okay. <clears throat> I also have another fissure here, which separates the cerebrum from the cerebellum. This fissure here is called the transverse fissure, the transverse fissure. Now, if you just look at the superior portions of the brain, you'll see that the you'll see that these kind of uh, hills and valleys. You'll see that this is on the superficial portion of the brain. When we see these hills and valleys here on the outside, so all of these structures here, this is what we consider the the cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex. So that's the name for basically that outer portion that kind of has these uh, hills and valleys. We don't call them hills and valleys. We actually call them uh, sulci and gyri. And I'll define those for you in just a moment. <clears throat> so the outer surface that we see here, that is the cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex is made up of a multitude of these hills and valleys. The hills, so each of these little hills, if you will, um, the hills are the gyri, gyri. If I'm just talking about one simple little hill, like this one or this one, then I would say gyrus. So, so gyrus is singular, gyri would be plural. And that would be just any of these hills that are on the cerebral cortex. Now the hills are, are separated by these smaller grooves or valleys, if you will. And these smaller grooves, these are the sulci, the sulci. Now, if I'm just talking about one particular small groove, then I could say sulcus. Okay, so sulcus would be singular, sulci would be plural. We have four lobes to the brain, and the lobes are defined according to their basic functionality. Keep in mind that the proportionality of the lobes are very different in the sheep or any other animal versus the human. We'll start with the frontal lobe on the sheep brain is going to begin about here. So the frontal lobe is going to be only about this portion of the sheep brain. Um, the frontal lobe is really the part of the brain that makes a human human. So in the frontal lobe, this is very in tune with, with aspects of your personality, planning for the future, understanding the consequences of, of one's actions, being able to kind of imagine outcomes and planning and that sort of thing. Now on the top, 
both on this side and this side, we have the parietal lobe. The parietal lobe. So the parietal lobe does uh, sensory processing. It also has your internal GPS. So your sense of spatial awareness, some sensory tactile processing is done here. This is going to be the occipital lobe. The occipital lobe. The occipital lobe principally is going to process visual information. Visual information and visual processing, where we have our temporal bones of the skull. So this is the temporal lobe, and of course on the other side, so the temporal lobes lie laterally. All right. What the temporal lobes do is the temporal lobes are going to function in processing auditory information. Um, the left and right hemispheres of the cerebrum are connected using a structure called the corpus callosum the corpus callosum. The corpus callosum allows for communication uh, between the right and left cerebral hemispheres. I'm going to go ahead and flip this over now. So on the inferior view, we have the cranial nerves. This is the cranial nerve number one. This is the olfactory nerve. So olfactory nerve, olfactory nerve. This is, the olfactory nerve is cranial nerve number one. Cranial nerve number two is the optic nerve, the optic nerve. Now, this structure here that kind of forms an X is the optic chiasm, the optic chiasm. So the optic nerve is going to come in and then it's going to cross. And the point at which the optic nerves cross is the optic chiasm. So cranial nerve number two is the optic nerve. And we're seeing just the little tail ends of the optic nerve here. <clears throat> this is the oculomotor nerve, oculomotor nerve. Down here is where you would have, so kind of down on this side and then down on that side would be cranial nerve four and five is usually here and here, but it has been torn off. Now, the nice thing is that they go in order. So cranial nerve one, cranial nerve two, cranial nerve three, okay? Cranial nerve four would be down here, okay? And cranial nerve five is gonna be in this area here and here. Oh, that's a good view. Okay. All right, so a couple other things for you to know down here. So this portion here is called the midbrain the midbrain, so just that region. And um, we have a little bump right here. So where we see this little bump, this is the pons, pons. So little bump region, this is the pons, which is another part of the brainstem. And then the last part of the brainstem that goes from about here to here, that is the medulla oblongata, the medulla oblongata. So the brainstem includes the midbrain, the pons and the medulla oblongata. Okay. As this exits the skull through the magnum foramen, it's going to then become the spinal cord at that point. All right, so this is the mid sagittal view of the brain. The most noticeable structure that you will come across is the corpus callosum. Now, uh, the corpus callosum is this looped structure. So this loop structure from here and all the way about to around here. This is the corpus callosum. And you might recall that the corpus callosum is what is going to allow the right and left hemispheres to communicate to one another. It might not look like there is a hole here, but there actually is. So I'm just gonna stick this through there. The ventricles of the brain are fluid-filled regions of the brain, and these regions of the brain are filled with cerebrospinal fluid. You have three ventricles, which are visible. So the first one is here, okay? This is the lateral ventricle, the lateral ventricle. Now, the corpus callosum is going to go up here and then it's going to loop around. As it loops around this structure here on the bottom, this is the fornix, fornix. Okay, so the corpus callosum is this portion here, and then it's gonna wrap around to become the fornix. Now, underneath the fornix, 
Okay, so this is a ventricle. This is the third ventricle. All right, so lateral ventricle is here. The third ventricle is here, which is going to be between the fornix and this structure here, which is the thalamus. So lateral ventricle, third ventricle, the fourth ventricle underneath the cerebellum. Okay, so here is the cerebellum, and I have this uh, little groove here at the bottom of the cerebellum. Here is the fourth ventricle, the fourth ventricle. So lateral ventricle, third ventricle, fourth ventricle. If you look closely, though, you can see a circular region that is just slightly more pigmented, very slightly more pigmented. This is the thalamus, the thalamus. The thalamus is the what we call the sensory relay center of the brain. So all of your senses kind of go through this structure at one point in time or another for uh, basically putting all your senses together to make sense of your senses. This little tiny thing here is the pineal gland or the pineal body. The pineal gland or the pineal body. The pineal gland or pineal body is important for a melatonin and melatonin helps you to sleep. So this is your, now behind the pineal body or pineal gland, we have another structure here. And this structure, and you'll notice that there is a slight lighter pigmentation that kind of separates it into a superior portion and an inferior portion. So this whole structure here. Now above this little line, this top portion of the structure is the superior colliculus the superior colliculus. Superior colliculus is going to be your light reflexes, okay? So in other words, you see a bright flash of light or a sudden movement, you have a reflex move your head to orient your head toward that sudden change of visual stimulation. Below this, we have our inferior colliculus. The inferior colliculus has our auditory reflexes. When you hear a sudden loud sound, you will reflexively orient your head toward the presence of that sound. So the superior colliculus is visual reflex, visual reflex. Inferior colliculus is auditory reflex. This here, this is the optic nerve. Okay, this is part of the optic nerve. Now, underneath the thalamus, we have the hypothalamus. Now, the hypothalamus is just a structure that you can't see. You just have to go on faith knowing it's there. So if they put a pin anywhere around here, that is going to be the hypothalamus. So the hypothalamus, so here's the thalamus. Hypothalamus is going to be around right there. And then here is the cerebellum again. Now, when you have this uh, sagittal section of the cerebellum, you can see these branch-like structures, these branch-like structures. And these structures have a special name, and these are called the arbor vitae, arbor vitae. So arbor means tree. So, um, and then we've got like the arbor society, you know, arbor vitae is basically the tree-like branches that we see in this sagittal section of the cerebellum. And just to, um, since we're looking kind of at a sagittal view, let me just point out where the midbrain, pons, and medulla oblongata would be in this view. So the midbrain is going to be in this area. And then that little lump that I told you to look for, here to here, that's the pons, pons. After that original bump, I still have a little bit of a bump. This is the medulla oblongata, the medulla oblongata. And then, of course, the brainstem is going to continue as the spinal cord.